the truth is we are weak and feeble. So much don't know it, but we all are. And we can't do your work without you. And so, Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you tonight for allowing things to be as well as they are. And we praise you and we thank you tonight for your mercy, your love, and your grace. We praise you and we thank you tonight for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Spirit, and your Holy Word. Hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. And Lord, we thank you for the great season of prayer that you've given us tonight, as you do every Wednesday night. We individually confess our sins, our faults, and failures. It is my prayer, I hope that everybody does that on, the, on an individual basis. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us for all of our sins. Even the people, Lord, who will pick this message up on demand all around the world. I praise you and thank you, Lord, for our staff here who works so hard to get your word out around the world in every country of the world. And Lord, uh, we pray tonight that you crucify and crush our flesh and the old man within us. Fill us, Lord, with the fullness and the power the unction and the anointing, the fruit, and uh, the liberty of your Holy Spirit. Grant the Lord's special unction and anointing to preach your Holy Word tonight, after a day like today. Thank you for holding it together. Thank you, Lord, for leading us and guiding us and directing us in spite of ourselves. And we pray that you will have all of the prayers that have gone up today, requests, requests, not only for ourselves, but for others to come to pass. Based upon your holy word, asking, you shall receive. Seeking, you shall find. Knocking, you shall be open unto you. We thank you in advance for what you will do. Please save those who are lost, revive those who are saved. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare us, Lord, for the rapture. Prepare us, Lord, for death. And save those, Lord, who need you so uh, much tonight. Heal those who are sick. And uh, comfort those who are grieving all around the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for us. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. A.W. Pink said the prevailing idea as I'm preaching in your hearing. How to have confidence in. How to have confidence in prayer. Part 4 Praying through the Bible. Message number 428 in this series. Where we have been preaching on prayer from Genesis to Revelation. And by the grace of God, we're marching on. Every Wednesday night we do this. Or every Wednesday. And Dr. A.W. Pink said the prevailing idea seems to be among us that. I come to God and ask Him for something that I want. 
that I expect him to give me that which I have asked. But this is a most dishonoring conception. The popular belief reduces God to a servant, and worse, our servant, doing our bidding, performing our pleasure. granting our desires, no, 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 the prosper, it, no prayer is coming to God, it, it says no, 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 prayer is coming to God, telling him, and, and sharing with him, my need, committing my way unto the Lord, and leading him to deal with it as seemeth best. Let his will be done. And so, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, last the two messages. In this, we begin at what God, through John, has to say about how Christians can have confidence, how you can have confidence in joy. You can have peace and assurance before God in a humble way. That's a beautiful thing. So, tonight we're going to commence dealing with three things we can learn from this passage. And we're just going to deal with the tonight, and it may just be half one. It depends on how the Lord leads me. So that we can have confidence when we pray. First, we can have confidence in prayer to God if our hearts do not condemn us. We can have confidence in prayer to God if our hearts do not condemn us. First John chapter three verses nineteen and twenty one through twenty one says, And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Here, ladies and gentlemen, John tells us that having a clear heart, a clear conscience, is a reason to have assurance, yea, confidence before God in prayer. Having a clear conscience and having your heart clear before God and uh, is a beautiful thing and it is important 
to have confidence in prayer, you need to have a clear conscience, a clean heart. If we are walking right with God, if, if we are doing the right thing, meaning that we're striving to do what God has commanded us to do from His Word, striving to do what God commands us to do, particularly uh, in our own personal lives, things that we know we should take care of and uh, do to make things right with Him and with people. You need to take that. You need to take that. Are we doing right by God? Are we doing right by people? And we have already touched on some of this in our introduction. And basically, God is saying to us that don't expect to have confidence in prayer to me if you are not striving to obey me and to do right by me and do right by your family and do right by uh, people. Because if you do, your heart will always condemn you because uh, the condemnation would be warranted if we are trying to pray to God and yet we won't try to make things right with Him and with fellow, our fellow man, our spouse, our family members. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the old folks used to say it and it's still true. Charity begins at home. <clears throat> we have too many Christians who love to love everybody else outside of the family, but they hate their family, but they love everybody else. They let other people run all over them and use them, but they hate their own family members because in truth they love them and, and they're trying to help them and they know them. See, your family knows you. You can't bamboozle them, and they can't bamboozle you. And so, uh, you might want to take heed to your family members and love them and respect them too. Because God will not hear and answer your prayers if you're not right with your own family members. And he will remind you of that. If you're not right with your, with your own brethren and sisters, sistering, if you will, in Christ at the church. You can talk to everybody in the community, but your own brothers and sisters in Christ at the church. That's not right, and your, and your uh, heart will condemn you over that. And God will do. He, he will convict you about it. What he's talking about. And you will not have confidence in prayer. If we are walking right with God, we can have confidence before God in prayer. Is your conscience clear? In the family, are you living a lie? Are you nursing a lie? Are you covering up something every day of your life? Yes, down in the South, and in, in the black community, this is a tradition to hide things and to cover up things. Don't tell me it's not true, because I know it's true, because I'm black and I'm from the South. I was born in the North, but I was raised in the South, so I know Southern ways. And this is not only on the black side, it's on the white side, too. You will not have confidence in God, or rather in prayer to God, if you're nursing a lie, if you're perpetuating a lie, if you're living a lie, if you're covering up something, 
And I'm here to tell you, this is a serious problem for many people. And uh, even, even south of the south of America, down in the Caribbean. This is a problem, and it's a greater problem. I have been told by missionaries, and they have been taken aback by how, as they have done work in the uh, West Indies, in the uh, Caribbean, some say the Caribbean, how that many people down there are liars and cover up things, hide things. This is a serious problem. Do you know there are people who really believe in the philosophy of carrying some things to the grave? So we must live so that we have a clear conscience if we want to have confidence in prayer. Is your conscience clear? I'm talking to people tonight that their conscience has not been clear in years. But Paul was big on having a clear conscience, by the way, toward God and toward man. At some point in your Christian life, you're going to have to become not only honest, but transparent and humble yourself. and be able to tell the truth about yourself by getting over yourself by getting to the point as the old saints used to say it's me, it's me, it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer because we live in a society where it's all about blaming other people getting on the therapist's couch and blaming your parents, blaming your grandparents, blaming your wife, blaming your husband, etc. You will never be free until you can tell the truth about yourself and confess your own sins, your deepest, most inner sins and thoughts in you. Get your conscience clear before God if you want confidence in prayer. We must live so that we have a clear conscience by resisting temptation to sin and faithfully doing the work that God has called us to do. We need to strive by the grace of God and with the help of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit of God to have a clear conscience where we, we know that we know that we know we have not done anything against God or against somebody else in disobeying God or hurting someone else by stealing from them lying to them and if you are saved and you are truly born again, you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside your life. And this, the Holy Spirit will help you with all of that. Because as soon as you think about lying, first he's going to try to stop you from telling the lie. If, if, if you continue to lie and go over him and lie, then he's going to convict you about the lie. And so then you've got to deal with that. And if you don't deal with that, you're not going to have confidence in prayer. He's going to gently take you down and, and, and help you to understand you need to confess that as sin. We will not feel confident about approaching God in prayer with our prayer requests if we feel guilt in our heart we won't. We will not. Dr. Adam Clark said, if we be conscious 
that our love is fading that is fake and phony we shall feel inwardly condemned in professing to have what we have not we will feel inwardly condemned as what hypocrites phonies and fakes and this is why you don't have any confidence in your prayer life and this is the reason why many people don't pray because they know listen to me very carefully they know deep down they're hypocrites they're phonies they're fakes it's all a charade it's all a show the whole 2.5 family and uh, how we act like you so in love at church and you hate each other at the house Oh, the plague pandemic is showing up a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. I said the plague pandemic is showing up a whole lot of things in the Christian church, in the Christian family. Mm -hmm. Some of you couples with your lying selves trying to make everybody think uh, your marriage and family is so wonderful and so perfect. Now you're divorced in a plague pandemic. You're separated. You're getting a divorce. You know it's bad if you're getting a divorce in the plague pandemic. When you need all the help you can get. See, all of the phoniness and all of the fake foolishness that was going on for years is all falling apart now. I don't know if you've ever seen this commercial that has a, a beautiful house sitting on a, on, on a stacked on cards. And that's what many uh, so-called Christian families are, a house of cards. And, and, and listen, when the pressure comes, when the, when the chastisement comes, when the rebuke comes, when trouble comes, the house of cards crumbles. Because it wasn't real. It was phony. True blue born again Christians who were praying before they'll make it. And their families will make it. Others will not and many are not i think about the beautiful couple who created pure flicks everybody thought that they had just the perfect marriage and perfect family they, they we share a last name brother white everybody knows brother white in the christian community well known popular started that pure flicks with i think a great idea a great motive as soon as the plague pandemic hits, this beautiful couple is shattered, going from the divorce court. Beautiful children, shattered. You know why? Because so many people live fake and phony, hypocritical lives, trying to, they waste their life trying to impress others and how wonderful and beautiful and perfect they are and that's not the case at all and that's why you need to stop following man and woman and follow Jesus and that's just the tip of the iceberg and I can go on and on If we be conscious to ourselves of our own sincerity, that we practice not deceit and use no mask, no phoniness, then have we confidence toward God. We're true blue, pure through and through, transparent. 
we can appeal to him for our sincerity. And we can come with boldness to the throne of grace. That's another word for confidence, boldness. To obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How about you, dear Christian friend? And I'm talking only to born-again ones. I'm not talking to church members. Right? You need to be saved. I'm going to talk with you in a minute. Are you, are you willing to dig deep and do the work? Are you willing to go back to that pastor that you left his church in a huff and offended and offending him? And, and every time you try to pray, God raises his head up in your mind, in your conscience, in your spirit. How about your husband, that wife that you offended, that wife that you hurt, that wife that you used to love, but now you hate? Because you think you have a Sylvia. You think you got a new model. And you ran her off. And every time you pray, God raises her hand, her face, right while you're praying to him. He puts, he puts your wife's face in between you and him because you were wrong. And you over here with Sylvia. Who ain't about nothing, really. She's too young for you. She doesn't even know what uh, an aspirin rhythm is. She does not know how to massage your feet like your wife did. And a whole lot of other things that you have to teach her. You had already taught your wife. And she's over there with your four children, struggling because three of them are boys. And you over here messing around. And every time you try to pray, now that you're in your new church, your new fangled modern church. Every time you try to pray, your wife comes before you. God just raises her face right there between you and him because you're wrong. How about it? Are you ready to go do the work, man, and make the thing right? That means get rid of Sylvia and go back and get your wife while you can. See, your conscience is not clear. Therefore, you don't have confidence in prayer. And therefore, guess what? You're not going to pray as you should. Because every time you pray, you feel guilty. Your heart condemns you because you left your first wife for Miss Sweet Thing Sylvia, led by the devil. And now it's all messed up in your children. And then, and that's another thing God had to do. He raised all four of your children right in front of your face while you're praying, every time you try to pray. And basically God is telling you, you know what to do. Yeah, don't, don't you? Do you not know that God does not tell you every detail oftentimes of what you ought to do? God knows you already know what you should do. So he'll just give you a little hint now. <laughs> Here we go. Here's your wife over there struggling with your four children you gave her. Little children. While you over here hoeing around and you want to pray to me, no confidence. Because your heart condemns you. You're not doing the right thing. Your heart condemns you. God is not really condemning you. Your, your own heart condemns you. Your conscience condemns you. For the evil that you're doing. And every time you try to pray. And especially when you really need some help from God. Here comes the wife. Her face comes up right there between you and God. 
Then here comes the four children, one by one, that you forsook. So that you can whore around with Sylvia, who ain't about nothing, and she's out whoring around on you because you reap what you sow. And you should have known you couldn't handle that young thing in the first place. She's too much for you. And look at you. Are you are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to humble yourself down and go make things right with your wife? Are you willing to humble yourself down and go make things right with your husband? For some of you women out there claiming to be Christians and talking foolishly about, well, he, he doesn't do it for me anymore, and so I'm going to leave him and divorce him and so forth. Then you take your four children out there away from your husband. For no reason, just because you can't have your way at the house. And every time you pray, when you get into trouble, and you will, God raises your husband's head in your face between him and you. And God is saying you need to go back to your husband and make things right. Are you willing to do the work, people? See, that's the hard work of life when you have messed up. When you have to go back and apologize and humble yourself and make things right and then make that apology stick. Meaning, you go back as a different man. You go back as a different woman. And you're willing to take some stuff that you were not willing to take before. Otherwise, you will not have boldness in prayer. You will not have confidence in prayer if you don't deal with the sin problem, the sin issue in your life. And you can't gloss over it. You can't, you know, play games with it. you, you got to be real about it before God Almighty. Otherwise, your heart will condemn you. Your conscience will condemn you. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help people to do the work that you want them to do in confessing their sins and repenting of their sins and going back and making things right so that when they pray, they will have your confidence and your assurance because their conscience is not condemning them. And uh, your Holy Ghost is not convicting them. And uh, they will then have peace and confidence that their prayers will be heard on time and answered. Help them, Lord, to make things right. All across this country and around the world, people who remain the name of Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for the same. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you're with us tonight and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sins as your Lord and Savior, your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. First, please understand with me that you are a sinner just as I am and that you have broken God's laws. The Holy Bible says very clearly in Romans 3.23 <clears throat> For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin always, the Bible states in Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death. We die because of our sin, our sinful nature and the sin we've committed. Our bodies go to a grave, our souls, which lives on forever, goes to that awful place called hell, eternal death in the torments of hell. This is a very serious matter. 
hell is no joke. Hell is a very serious matter. And one of the reasons why it is a very serious matter to me is because once you go to hell, it is forever. There is no second chance. So thirdly, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew, Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a very real place. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody else in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. He described hell as a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. He described hell as a place where that worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. You don't have to go to hell. The good news is what Jesus Christ said himself in John 3.16 in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. For Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou and you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven. So, dear friend, right now, right where you are, you can get saved. You don't have to be in a church. You don't have to be with a priest. You don't have to be a member of a church. You don't have to give any money to the church. You don't have to get baptized to get saved. The thief on the cross got saved. He never got down off the cross. He died in the heaven with Jesus. And so, uh, just simply believe in your heart in Jesus Christ. That he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for your sins. Was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. And your soul will be saved right now tonight. Follow me in what is called the sinner's prayer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Holy Father God, repeat after me phrase by phrase, Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have committed some sins such as lying. I have committed some sins such as stealing. I have committed such sins such as lusting in my heart after people and things. I have committed such sins as dishonoring and disobeying my parents. And I have committed such sins as taking your holy name in vain. And for Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. I know that I deserve to go to hell, <clears throat> just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. And save my soul. 
Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and into my spirit.